Hello everybody and welcome back to Bike Matters. My name is Brett and look what I've got for you today. It is the brand new Honda Forza 350. All nice and new for 2021 meeting Euro 5 standards. And in today's video, I'm doing a full road test review. So let's go have some fun, shall we? So let's start off with the key change in this model for 2021 and that is to make it Euro 5 compliant they have gone to a 330cc liquid cooled ESP plus engine on this an improvement of 50cc from the 278cc that was in the 300 so nice increase of engine capacity there and performance figures wise we now have 28 brake horsepower and 31.5 newton meters of torque from the Forza 350. So it's a real nice increase in power. And being Euro 5 compliant and being Honda's ESP Plus, it is designed to be nice and economical too. Now from my kind of sums, it should get about 80 miles per gallon when ridden sensibly. And with that 11.7 litre fuel tank, you should be getting over 200 miles on the entire tank relatively easily. Now straight away, sitting on the Honda Forza 350, it is comfortable. The seat is 718 millimeters high. It is relatively wide, so I'm five foot six, and I do struggle to get both feet down flat on the floor. I'm slightly more tiptoed, but the seat itself is lovely and comfortable. And where the kind of divide is for them pillion, it's been nicely structured into a backrest, which actually is really comfortable and helps keep you a really nice solid position on the bike. Some maxi scooters where it's quite a flat seat, you kind of slide a bit about. This keeps you nice and kind of sunk right into position. The riding kind of stance on the maxi scooter as well is lovely and neutral as armchair like. My back, my arms, my wrists all feel nice and comfortable. But don't let that really fool you because I've spent a good few hours on this and put a good few miles on it. And although it is offering you that maxi scooter like comfort, and just, you know, the suspension just glides, it's like a Grand Tourer. It is really sporty as well. And the, that new engine on this is really pokey and it accelerates superbly, you know, all day long to 80 mile an hour. Now, I think the max speed they state on this is about 85 mile an hour. Now on two kind of test runs I've done, of course, not on, uh, on your average road, I got to 85 and 88 and both times it felt like there's still more there. Now, yes, your everyday top speed is probably 85, a little bit less if you want to be nice to it, but it is still a really decent kind of top speed from this category of maxi scoot, and it gets this so much better than I thought it would do. My one kind of problem with this scooter initially is that you feel like you're going slower than you are. It's just that comfortable it's one of those you're kind of enjoying yourself on the bends and you kick out and then you kind of look down at your speed and you think ah i need to kind of slow it down a little bit i'm having too much fun but yeah it's a great sporty maxi scooter this that change in engine capacity with that extra bit of poke just means you've got yourself a scooter that's you know yep yeah, if you want it for commuting or slightly longer travels it's got you but this is perfect for touring this is perfect for you know sunday news it is a great fun maxi scooter already you can see why the honda forza range is so popular and talking about the range there's obviously a 125 cc forza and there's now the 750 forza as well which obviously used to be the integra but now it's part of the forza family and this is smack bang in the middle for those kind of a2 enthusiasts or newsers now it isn't just kind of the engine on this which has impressed me the styling of it is fantastic it's smart it's modern it's sophisticated but it's also aggressive and sporty I love the colorway on this blue is definitely my choice but the others are in the two greys are very good as well but when you get it on the bends whoa, how it's set up the comfort of that seat 
and how the suspension is set up. It glides. And lovely and manoeuvrable. But with the pokiness of that 330cc liquid cooled engine, it's like, come on, let's have some fun. You can really enjoy yourself on this. Now, the windscreen has been revised for this year's model. It's been increased in length and reshaped too. And it's nicely electric adjustable. There, look, there we go. Up, down, up. Which is great. And it really is a nice tall screen that helps stop wind buffering on those windier days when you're a little bit more exposed. Now, as we're going along here, it's time to do a big shout out to Lexham Insurance. If you didn't already know, they power us here at Bike Matters. They make it all possible for us to put out this content. Not just that, but if you're a Bike Matters viewer in the United Kingdom, well, Lexham are giving you a really cool option. If you click the link in the top right hand corner now, that takes you through to Lexham's quotation form. Now, if you take out a moped, scooter, or motorcycle insurance quotation, at the end, the premium shown has automatically had £20 deducted just because you're a Bike Matters viewer. So no chance of saving 20 quid directly with Lexum. Now one thing I would say that I've struggled with, which you're soon getting used to, is the indicators. So the indicators, for me, I'm naturally kind of with riding other bikes. My thumb goes towards the horn. So I go to indicate and, oh, I bib someone accidentally. But that's just me being an idiot. It's soon, you're soon getting used to it, but just the indicator feels a little bit lower than I was expecting considering other bikes I've ridden recently. Now if we take a look at that instrument panel, in the middle there we have the LCD display, which is nice with a black background and white text, which is all nice and visual and it's got loads of information. We have got clock, we've got fuel gauge, we've got oil temperature, we've got trip, we've got odometer, we've got range, we've got air temperature, we've got battery voltage and we have an info A and info B option on the left of the switch gear that lets us navigate further options now the screen is lovely and readable it provides so much information it's got you covered I think personally me I'd probably have a little bit less displayed on there at one time but maybe have all the digits a little bit bigger but that's just nitpicking it does the job perfectly to the left is where we have the analog speedometer with dominant miles per hour being the big figure and kilometers in the middle to the right is where we have the rev gauge all nice and easy, very stylish quality as well. Now onto the switch gear, and that is just, there's a lot of it, but it all feels nice and accessible and easy to get to, and it feels quality to the touch. We have the traction control button at the back there. We have our windscreen adjuster. We have our lights, we have info A for the LCD panel. We have the horn, indicators, info B. This little section down here is the actual extra for the Honda Bluetooth. Uh, voice control technology then we've got the kill switch the hazard lights and the electric start and then further down we have the nice easy to use smart key keyless ignition so all in all look, although it looks like there's a lot going on with this switch gear it's really nice and simple and easy to use now when it comes to storage options the forza 350 has plenty of standard under that big comfortable seat is enough for two full face helmets and i did get both my full face HJC, my F17 I70 to fit absolutely perfect underneath. Do check yours for compatibility, but for me, it was no problem at all. Furthermore, if I just push in here to the left here, there is a nice little glove box, which is a nice little space there to fit a few small items such as your keys, your wallet, your phone, so on. But there's also a USB type C charging port, which is nice and handy as well, and good to have from Honda. So as standard on this, we have Honda selectable torque control, which is basically their version of traction control. And you can turn that off or on. On the left of the switch gear here at the back is a little T trigger. If you pull that in, oh, we've turned it off. If we put it back in again, we've enabled it. So it's nice and easy to use that Honda selectable torque control. So now as we open up on this country lane, let's talk about the suspension. We have telescopic forks at the front and twin shocks to the rear. So it gives you that gorgeous maxi scooter-like comfort. But thanks to that engine, I have to slow down now, boo. Um, thanks to that engine, it just really gives a nice sporty performance so you can enjoy that lump soaking ability of the Forza 350, but just also really get a nice little, nice little bend on when you're going around those twisties. 
got a really nice sporty aspect. This can be your smart and sophisticated scooter to get around town. It can be your perfect partner for touring. And there's also, thanks to that increased engine size, that 330 liquid cooled engine with 28 horsepower, there's this little cheeky fun naughty side to it as well. Where it just wants to have fun. It's like, come on. And it gets me into problems already, this scooter, because I'm going along the country roads, enjoying myself, and then look down at the speedometer and think, oh, I just need to turn it down a little bit. <laughs> it's great fun. Admittedly, I do really have to search to find things that I think could be improved, because it is a phenomenal all-rounder. Um, I think with 80 miles per gallon, is phenomenal. But could we get a little bit more range thanks for a bigger fuel tank on this? I think, I dare say, Honda engineers would throw a spanner at my face for saying, oh, I think they should have tweaked to, to get a bigger uh, fuel tank on this. I dare say every last millimetre of space has been used, but say a 13 litre fuel tank on this would just help give that little extra bit of range on this to complement it even further as a tourer. It could be a full LCD dash. Again, that would incur costs and put this up price-wise. It could have heated grips as standard and it could have cruise control. So those are the kind of things that it doesn't have. However, what it does have is just about everything else. The engine is efficient. The engine is sporty. The suspension is very comfortable. The seat itself is nice, comfortable, well padded, very well structured with that back support. Keeps me nicely positioned. The brakes, let's throw them on now. Oh, the brakes are good. So it's a 256 millimeter disc at the front, 240 at the back, no one's by me. Let's throw on the brakes again. Oh, the braking on this is fantastic. So yeah, 256 millimeter disc at the front, 240 at the back, dual ABS and the, the braking is really good, responsive, progressive, does everything you need of it, I, I can't criticise that. The underseat storage and glove box is superb options as standard. The windscreen is perfect. It does flex about a bit, there's no de denying that. Personally, it doesn't bother me at all, but for some, I dare say it might, but it gives you that extra protection as standard and I think that's got to be applauded really. Accelerate. Here we go. 30, 40, 50, 60. Just like that. I don't know how quick that was. But that was pretty damn fast for a 350 or 330cc engine scooter to be precise. But yeah, weighing in at 184 kilograms, it's not too heavy. It's not ultra light. But when you actually got it on the road, yeah, it feels great. It, I've got no complaints at all. I'm not the biggest chap in the world. I'm not particularly heavy, I'm not particularly tall. But for me, it's not a problem when it comes to manual handling or riding. The wind mirrors are nicely positioned. Obviously, it's more of a forward position. But when you've got it set up, you can have, you know, near on all perfect view behind you. There's only a tiny bit of your shoulders into view, which is really good going. When you look at other competitors on the market with their kind of mid-sized maxi scooters and you look at the Honda Forza 350 and especially ride it in person with the spec that it's got, it's a very well-priced machine and it's just going to suit so many people down to the ground. At £5,469, that's for all three, all three colourways start from that by the way, this blue and the dark grey and the light grey all start from £5,469. It is a very well-priced option from Honda. You know, with the Honda Forza 350, they were onto a winning formula. Now, obviously, they had to make changes to make it Euro 5 compliant. But Honda have gone in and put that bigger engine. They've made loads of subtle improvements to the bodywork, the windscreen, the engine. You know, they've done all these subtle improvements that make the Honda Forza 350 just a fantastic option. Now, as I'm going along here enjoying these country lanes, it's time to wrap this one up. I really hope you've enjoyed my video on the Honda Forza 350. If you have, please give it a like rating. Any comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed it, then subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon, 
But thank you so much for watching, everybody. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.